What's going on, everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you a remembrance of sorts for CRPGs that never quite made it, games that were cancelled in various stages of development, and as somebody who covers CRPGs all the time, I thought this might make for an interesting video, as I was recently playing Fallout 3, which reminded me of the original version of Fallout 3 that was being worked on, Fallout Van Buren. And from there, that simply reminded me of all the other CRPGs out there that never quite made it to the finish line, for one reason or another. So that's kind of what I wanted to take a look at today, but do understand right away that due to the very nature of these games being cancelled, there's very little to show you. Van Buren actually is probably the most well documented, with several of the others having little to zero sort of media out there to show you, video, screenshots, etc. And in those cases, I'm just going to try to show relevant footage from the other games in those series to the best of my ability. And because of that, you're honestly probably pretty safe to just listen to this one if you prefer. But from there, let's dive into it. Now just to throw people a bit of a curveball, I want to start this video out by talking about a game that is not actually very old at all. This game was cancelled basically this year, after what can only really be described as a failed attempt at early access. And this title is Unforetold Witch Stone. An ambitious game to be sure, but a pretty mild reception followed by what I believe was an investor dropping out meant that they simply could not continue. And because of this, the game was delisted listed on Steam after this and is no longer available to purchase, but I had actually made a video about it before that point, which is obviously where all the footage you're seeing is coming from. But I think the real story here is that Witchstone was a game with a ton of potential. I think with some patches and finalization, things actually getting brought up to speed during an early access period, this game could have been something special. With a character creation that saw you picking and choosing from a handful of different classes, alongside plenty of other customization options, before being dumped into the wider world of Calcundia a land that just saw the recent birth of a new nation, made possible by people fleeing to an area previously unexplored in order to escape two warring empires. These empires, having exhausted themselves fighting each other, no longer had the forces to take on this brand new front to the north. And the story of this game was supposed to be about you and what you ultimately do with this brand new nation as you sort of rise to power yourself, reaping the consequences of your own actions. And this was done through through their somewhat unique role-playing systems that allowed you to walk up and recruit basically anybody you saw, but they all had their own personalities, desires, and things, so whether or not they stayed with you would be certainly up for debate, but as you recruit these people and move through areas, you could interact with any individual settlements in a host of ways, including individual people, stealing, murdering, or simply finding creative solutions around all sorts of problems in a way that was really reactive. And just what they had released into early access saw a few different areas that would present you with general goals and things, but how you accomplished those was largely up to you if you wanted to bother with them at all. As the game's quest system was more about milestones and opportunities, as they called it, as opposed to accomplishing something specific. So from that, you can probably tell that what they were trying to do here was ambitious, to say the least, and probably not least of which, because of all that ambition, meant the early access showing was, of course, a little rough around the edges, as you might imagine, which led to the problems we discussed. So, on one hand, it's no surprise that this game was effectively cancelled, though I believe technically it's on an indefinite pause. Either way, though, if this game had made it to the finish line, I think it could have been a hell of a title. But that brings us to our next entry, probably the most well-known title on this list, which was Fallout Van Buren. Cancelled in December of 2003, Van Buren had quite a bit of work put into it, and thus things like a tech demo that you can sometimes see, and then screenshots abound, allowing us to get a look at some of the things they had in mind here. What's more, though, is that a lot of the ideas and things from this game specifically were recycled into New Vegas, such as the character Joshua Graham was meant to be a companion in Van Buren, the idea of Caesar's Legion was there, alongside a whole host of locations and things as well. But Van Buren, unlike the actual Fallout 3, was meant to be an isometric CRPG, but this one would have been 3D, utilizing what was called the Jefferson Engine, what was meant to be a replacement to the Infinity Engine at the time, which would have facilitated 3D graphics in a nonetheless isometric world. 
Now, in terms of story and what this game was meant to be about, the story of Van Buren was supposed to follow a mad scientist named Presper discovering what is known as the New Plague. This is the virus that FEV was originally developed from the research into curing that plague. Presper was going to use this virus alongside a satellite called Bomb-01 to effectively launch a whole bunch more nukes and bathe the world in radiation yet again in order to seize control of the world for himself in a plan for world domination. Now, this was meant to play out over the American Southwest, so the areas of Nevada, Utah, Colorado, kind of in that area, which is an interesting enough concept. And from things like tech demos, etc., that are still floating around, people have inferred a great deal more. But nonetheless, this one was obviously canceled, which one way or another was almost certainly down to the financial situation of Interplay Entertainment at the time the game's publisher. And while I enjoy the Fallout games of today, I think everyone knows I would absolutely be interested in any isometric Fallout in CRPG format, which has recently made news because Larian had expressed an interest in doing something with the Fallout franchise, which I think was more an offhanded comment than anything that's ever going to actually happen, but it's been on people's minds, so something to note at the very least. But that brings us to our third entry, and this is the original version of Baldur's Gate 3. Now, these days, in 2023, BG3 released to critical acclaim. I covered it a ton myself, as most people watching this video probably know, but it wasn't the first stab at continuing the Baldur's Gate franchise. That credit goes to Baldur's Gate 3 The Black Hound, which officially started development in 2001 before being ultimately cancelled in 2003 when Interplay, the same company behind Van Buren, lost the rights to develop further Dungeons & Dragons games for PC. Now, if you were hoping for a story that more directly continued the Ball Spawn saga, you would be sorely disappointed, as Baldur's Gate 3 The Black Hound had next to nothing to do with the original two games. In fact, what's more, this was meant to be a sort of reboot as well, and the first of what they hoped at the time would be a trilogy, which obviously never even got off the ground. This game was also planning on using the Jefferson engine of Van Buren, but if this game had no connection to the original two, well, what was it supposed to be about? Well, none other than the Black Hound, as it were. So your character would, at the beginning of the game, have an encounter with what is referred to as, very directly, the Black Hound. And then over the course of the game, you were meant to find out that this Black Hound was actually the essence and spirit of guilt. And when this Black Hound is essentially killed right in front of you, it latches on to your very soul, at which point you yourself become a sort of arbiter of people's guilt. All the while, the Black Hound would be funneling all of this guilt that you're collecting along the way to what would seem to be the game's planned big bad, a person resurrected out of guilt for their death, only for them to have turned into an abomination from the resurrection itself. Now, beyond that, this particular game was meant to be set in the Dale Lands of the Forgotten Realm setting. So this would be familiar to you if you've played 5th edition D&D, more than likely, as that is, like, the campaign setting for that particular edition. But, alas, none of it was meant to be. Now, supposedly, this game was going to connect to Icewind Dale 2 a little bit, as well as Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2, but the specifics of that were never really made apparent. Otherwise, though, in terms of mechanics, much like the original Baldur's Gate, the level was intended to be pretty low. I think the maximum was talked about as being level 8, to let people continue to level up in those sequels that they wanted to do. Now, interestingly enough to me, they apparently planned for this game to be non-linear allowing you to effectively visit any location right off the bat, and choosing to do or not do things along the way, and failed and incomplete quests might come back to bite you as much as a particular option in the completion of any given quest. And that was supposed to come with its own reputation system that divided reputation up into regions, factions, and your overall fame and infamy. And how characters reacted to any one of those given reputations might change and alter itself, of course. But as interesting as some of that sounds, none of it was meant to be, and the game was ultimately scrapped, only for us to take another 20 years to see the version of Baldur's Gate 3 we would get, which itself was a fantastic game that saw all that critical acclaim. So all in all, it could have certainly gone worse. 
but given that Josh Sawyer was originally working on this one, I would have been interested to see what became of it. Nonetheless, though, we've still got a couple more games to talk about, with this fourth one being yet another Black Isle title, this one being Torn. Torn was a original setting that they wanted to use in order to get away from Dungeons and Dragons a bit, but this one was ultimately cancelled in July of 2001. And while very little survives of it, like one or two screenshots you can barely see, we do know a few things about this one. It was initially meant to use a modified version of the special system from Fallout, alongside a character who had been cursed to bring misfortune to everywhere and everyone that they happened to come across, all while they are attempting to clarify a series of prophecies. Now, the game world was meant to take place on the world of Torn, where an architect, the sort of be-all, end-all god, created a number of other gods who then divided themselves up into factions of chaos, order, and balance, who couldn't agree on how to effectively manage the world they had been given, and thus started warring with themselves, and then they created armies out of sentient beings to effectively fight those wars before that turned into, of course, the world that would have been presented to the player. While a handful of gameplay details have been mentioned about this one, I think probably the most interesting one to note really is that it planned on using a recovery system, which is not unlike what I believe Pillars of Eternity wound up using, or at least a similar system to what they're describing here, where all of your actions and things rather than Utilizing action points in turn-based mode would instead play out in real time, with each of them having an associated time it took your character to recover. But while we simply don't know enough about Torn to say whether it would have been cool or not, as it was a brand new IP at the time, I think it's a shame it's not one of those older titles I could have made a review out of and just to have seen how it was these days, as the idea at least sounded interesting to me. But then coming up on our final cancelled game, we have Mean Time. Meantime is a very old cancelled game, let's say. It was initially designed to be a follow-up to the original Wasteland. I, I'm not entirely sure if this game was cancelled in 1989 or 1990, as dates are a little hard to find on it, but if you're familiar with the history of the original Wasteland title, it's a little bizarre, let's say, because the original Wasteland IP was owned by Electronic Arts. EA originally tried to produce a sequel to Wasteland called Fountain of Dreams, but later dropped all connection to the Wasteland universe with that game, which was odd. And then the spiritual successor to Wasteland, which turned out to be Fallout, came out much later. But before all of that, and Interplay's involvement with Fallout, of course, they first tried to make Mean Time. Mean Time was apparently very similar to the original Wasteland title, both in terms of engine and gameplay, which essentially means it's ancient by today's standards to be sure, but the ideas at play were pretty interesting, because they were apparently wanting to mess around with time travel for this one, where your player would travel through time and recruit famous historical figures who would then all collectively go around and attempt to repair damage caused to the timeline by time-traveling villains, which would then of course result in altered timelines, which sounds like a lot for a game of that day and age to keep up with, to be sure, which I have to imagine is at least one contributing factor to why this game was cancelled. The other portions apparently being at least according to Brian Fargo, who worked on it, that this was being developed around the time where the 8-bit computer market was starting to slack off, and a key member of the project left when they were only about 75% done, only for that to be followed up by the release of Ultima 7 in 1992 when they tried to revive the project after its initial cancellation, causing them to realize that they were working on a game that was effectively inferior in basically every way. So pick your reason there, I suppose, but speaking at least for myself, I think it would have been really cool to see a follow-up to Wasteland a little sooner than the Wasteland 2 that finally released in 2014, more than two decades later. But that is pretty much where I'm going to wrap this video up. I just thought it might be fun to take a look back at a few cancelled CRPGs and talk about what might have been, and hopefully somebody found that at least somewhat entertaining or interesting. And if you did, I certainly hope you like, comment, and subscribe subscribe, all that YouTube jazz, as I do cover CRPGs all the time. But regardless of all that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.